Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be going up in my attic and fixing some issues that I've got. Now the attic is in pretty rough shape right now. Everything's been cobbled together. People have done electrical work up there and the wires are just going everywhere. Insulation is exposed in some places where you can just see the sheetrock below it. So I need to go up there and fix all of this. Now I'll show you a couple things I'm gonna take up with me. I have a couple LED lamps that I'm gonna take up, one corded, one battery, and a headlamp that will help out because there are no lights up there right now. I also have some wire. I'm gonna be doing a fair amount of electrical work up there. I've got a couple boxes that I'm gonna take up and actually install permanent lighting up there so that if I do any work in the future, I can easily work up there without having to bring all these lights up with me. I ha also have all my electrical tools so I don't have to come out of the attic. I have all my wire nuts and different wire connections that I need. And then I also have some spider killer and some bee spray as well. I hate bees, don't want to get stung, so I'm going to take that up just in case. Now it is pretty cold out right now, we're in January, so it shouldn't be an issue for the spiders and bees. Now I also have a lot of these cans of spray insulation that I'm going to be using to seal cracks and gaps from the house up into the attic to seal that off so that there, there isn't air leaking from the downstairs up into the attic and from the attic down into the house. That's going to save a ton of energy and I know already that we have at least 20 cam lights in our house and those are notorious for leaking air from the downstairs up into the attic so I'm going to be sealing those up as well. Now another must have is a good mask. Now you can easily get the paper mask. They don't really do that much. They'll filter out some of it, but I really like these respirators. They have a rubber mouthpiece on it that seals up against your face really well. It's comfortable. It also has two filters on either side, a, a thin filter on the outside to grab all of the big debris. And then on the inside, there is a really fine filter that filters out all the fine dust that could be getting in your lungs. Now, if you have asthma or other respiratory issues, having a nice filter is really going to help. And just to show you how much this filtered out, just the time that I spent up in the attic, this is, I switched the filters out twice, but this is when it got a little dirty, had to change it out. You can just see the layer of insulation that this filtered out and kept this from getting in my lungs. Now I'm going to start carrying all the tools up into the attic and getting ready to start. I need to just start digging in checking everything, making sure everything's good, and figuring out what needs to be fixed. Now the first section I'm starting in, you can already see the wiring is a mess. Most of the wiring up here has been redone, but all the wires have about two to three feet of slack, and that isn't necessary. It looks messy. It's hard to get around in the attic without tripping over these wires. So I'm going to fix that by folding it in six inch sections and taping it by the box or by the light fixture that it's running to. If you ever need more slack, you can cut that tape and use the wire there, but it will straighten everything up and keep it organized. Also, there's a ton of clippings and wire strippings all over this, this attic. If you're doing electrical work up in the attic, don't do this. Just put it in a bucket, throw it away once you're done. It really makes it look like a very sloppy job has been done and you haven't done it right. Also, all the boxes up here aren't fastened down to anything. You can easily trip over them and cause some shorts or cut into the wires. So I'm gonna fasten them to the rafters. But before I jump into all of the insulation and fixing everything else, I'm gonna run some permanent lights through the peak of this attic. I'll put three lights, one in the center and one on either end. And that will really help brighten this up so that I can work a lot easier. I'm installing a switch box right above the ladder. So as you climb up into the attic, you can turn on all three lights with one switch.
to get power to those three lights that I have just ran across the attic, I'm going to be using the electrical box I first started talking about that wasn't mounted down to anything. This I know is only supplying the master bedroom lights, nothing else, so it definitely has enough capacity to run three more lights through the attic and that should be no problem at all. So I'm going to hook that up, make sure the power is off before you start working on anything like this and that's when having these battery powered lights is really helpful because I had to shut off the power to the attic and keep that off while I was working so these battery powered lights worked really well. Now it may seem like a lot of extra work and not worth it, but really it was only about 15 to 20 dollars to install these lights. Only took me about an hour and a half to do them. And now that they're done, I have lots of light in the attic. It will save me a ton of time. I don't have to carry around a light and make sure the light's shining right where I'm working all the time. I can easily see up here now. Also, the lights that I installed have outlets on them, so I can easily take a tool up there, plug it in, and run it off of the power on the light as well. It just really is a lot easier, and in my opinion, definitely worth it. If you know how to run wire and it can install your own boxes and lights, you really need to have lights in your attic if you're going to be spending any time up there at all. Now the lighting is just about finished. I need to start working now on fixing up and cleaning up the attic. The first thing I wanted to check, make sure that the insulation was in good shape. And it, thankfully it does look like it's in pretty good shape. There's no animal damage or water damage or mold going on up here. It seems like it's in pretty good shape. There's a lot of older gray insulation with some newer stuff, white stuff on top. And it all seems like it's working pretty good. So I'm gonna leave that in there. Now next on the list is to seal up around all of the electrical boxes, can lights, all the tops of the walls, and any holes that are going down through the walls where the wires are going. I need to seal all of that so that there is no air leaking from the downstairs up into the attic. So first I'm gonna expose all of the can lights. These actually have really big gaps around them and I'm gonna make sure that I seal those up really well because those are probably the majority of the air leaking up through the attic is going through those can lights. Next, I'm gonna be also exposing all the tops of the walls and sealing up the gaps along that. This will help increase efficiency as well and help insulate the walls. Now you don't have to expose everything this much and clean it up like this. I wanted to show you guys what it looked like, how I was filling this up with spray foam. I filled up three 55 gallon bags full of insulation to clear out this section. But compared to the other side of the attic, this has way more insulation. So I'll level out what's left here and use those three bags to fill in the other side and make sure everything's even. Now you can see here I'm just exposing about two to three inches on either side of the walls and around the can lights and this gives me plenty of room to spray foam and seal those up and not have to expose the whole ceiling and empty out all the insulation while I'm here. Once I'm done sealing everything up with spray foam, I can start leveling out the insulation again. I'll fill this all back in, make sure everything's level with the rafters. Now I'm also making sure that the insulation isn't filling up where the rafters and the trusses are meeting at the lowest point of the roof. You don't want that to be full of insulation or else it's gonna be causing a lot of ventilation issues. So I've got this whole section leveled out. This is the master bedroom. I have everything sealed up and I can now fill this in with insulation. 
I'm also going to be going through the rest of the attic doing the same thing. I have right here a piece of paper. I went downstairs and sketched out where all the lights are in the house, where those can lights are that I need to seal, all the electrical boxes, and where the walls will be going as well. This isn't to scale. It will just give me sort of a checklist that I can make sure that I'm getting everything that I can see downstairs. Now there were already strips of plywood and chipboard up here that I can use for platforms to work on. This helps a lot so you don't have to worry about stepping on the rafters and not falling through the ceiling. So in the main travel areas, I'm going to be screwing these down to the rafters so that they aren't going to be moving around. Then I'll have a couple that I'll be moving around with me wherever I'm working. I'll set those up and it'll make it a lot easier to work and more comfortable. The next place I'm going to be sealing up is around the access door to the attic. And I know this spot is not going to be able to seal up that well. It's going to be probably the biggest point of leak efficiency in the attic, but I want to make it as efficient as possible. So whoever installed this didn't do a good job. They left a lot of gaps around the outsides in between the boards fastening it to the rafters. So I'm just going to fill those up with spray foam and try to seal it as good as I can. Then I'll spread out the insulation again, level out everything with the rafters, and it should be good to go. Another section that was losing a lot of energy was this, I believe it was a skylight. And you can see in the top, that chipboard right there is not the original plywood, it's been replaced. So I'm just gonna tear out all the sheetrock, clean this out. I'm gonna leave the framing in case this is holding anything up on the roof. It's an old house, so I'm not gonna tear out the framing if I don't have to. Also, this section in here wasn't insulated, so I'm gonna cover that up, make sure that it's not just exposed sheetrock, losing a lot of energy from the house. You can see with this loose insulation, it's very uneven, so I'm pulling it from the high spots and leveling it out in the low areas, making sure that I have a good six inches across the whole attic. Now for the climate that I live in, it's recommended to have an R value insulation of 30 to 60. And to have this loose insulation only filling up the rafters, it's not nearly what it should be. So this is only about uh, probably 20 to 25 R value. Now to fix this, I'm actually gonna get rolled out insulation. It won't be in this video, maybe a future video I'll do of insulating this attic. I'll roll out the insulation the opposite direction of the rafters so that it supports the weight of the insulation and doesn't just crush the loose insulation on top. And that will bump it up to probably R40 or R50, which is perfectly fine for where I'm at. Now as I was working, I noticed a large section of the sheetrock was exposed, so I went closer to check it out and found something really exciting. Oh, nice. I was shocked to find it and was even more shocked that it still worked. Now all my battery tools are Milwaukee, so I don't have a charger for rigid, so I'll probably have to get a charger for it because it's still a really nice drill. I don't know how long it's been up here, at least three or four years because that's how long we've owned the house. Now in this next section, I'm finding layer after layer of four inch insulation with the moisture barrier on the back. And this is really bad. You don't wanna have moisture barriers 
on the attic in different layers because it's going to trap in moisture it's going to cause mold and it's going to cause rot so i'm going to pull all of that foreign insulation that has the moisture barrier out i'll put it in a bag i'll probably end up using it somewhere else in the attic but you can easily just rip the paper off the back and still use that insulation so i'm going to fold it all up and put it in a couple bags and i'll probably end up using it before i'm finished with this project So I don't know what it is about attics and crawl spaces. Maybe it's just miserable to work in them. I, I get that. But people feel like they need to cut corners. They don't do a complete job. They make a mess and just leave it up here because nobody sees it. But when you do come up here, it looks like a mess. If you had a house inspector come up here with what the attic looked like before, they would have a lot of things that you need to get fixed before you sell the house and all sorts of problems. So another thing that I ran into up here was this box right here. So this was installed when they installed new cam lights in the dining room and all of these are new wires going into it. The problem is this box is way too small. You can see the lid here is being pushed up and won't seal. So either he didn't put the wires in right or the box is way too small for the amount of stuff he's got in there. Now another thing is this isn't really tied to anything. I'd like to have it probably nailed to this two by four right here just so it's stable staying in one place not getting tripped on and pulling the wires out and all sorts of stuff also there's this loose wire and it's about where this junction box should be too so it has about a, a amount the same amount of slack as all the other wires i'm guessing it was supposed to be in this one he took it out when he put in the new junction box and there was enough room so he actually put two three wire nuts on here and it's the same style of wire nuts, just the clip-ons that are in all of the other work he's done. So I know he did this. Uh, it's not up to code. It's not safe. Enough. So I'm going to install a bigger junction box. It's only like 60 more cents at a hardware store. I don't know why he didn't do that first. Um, I'll install a bigger junction box here and put all of those wires into that junction box. Make sure the lid goes down completely and it doesn't get stuck open like this. Again, each of these wires had about two to three feet of slack. So I'm gonna fold those up in six inch sections and put a wire tie or electrical tape around it to hold it in place right beside the box. Now again, be really careful about this. Make sure the power's off. If you don't know how to do electrical, don't jump into a project like this. I have a couple of videos if you're interested in learning a little bit more on how to do a wiring and hook everything up. Go check out those videos. I'll leave the link at the end of this one. Now in this section of the attic, you can see outside that the trusses were starting to sag and that's because they messed up the supports up here. They took out a supporting wall and had to put in this new beam and didn't put in supports for the trusses anymore. So we had to come in and build two knee walls on either side of the attic to support those trusses individually and try to lift them back up into place. If you're interested in seeing how to build a knee wall like this and how to lift up a sagging roof, check out my video next week where I'll be showing you just how to do this.
Now all that foreign insulation that I took out of this section of the attic because it had the moisture barrier on it, I'm going to take that out now and this is a perfect place to fill it up in between these two beams. So I'll take off that paper moisture barrier on the back and then I can layer as much of this insulation as I want in this gap and fill it up and not have to worry about that moisture causing damage in here. Now another thing that I ran into that I feel is very common for attics is to have the exhaust fans from the house go straight up into the attic and not actually outside. So this could be exhaust fans for bathrooms and showers as well as kitchens. In this case I had a bathroom vent that went straight up into the attic. I actually fixed that pretty quickly after buying the house. I didn't want that to rot out the, the sheeting up on top and cause some mold. So I fixed that and I also ran into now the hood vent over top of our stove goes straight up into the attic and not actually outside. So I need to fix that as well. And you can see right over there, I believe that's the box for the fan and for the hood vent on the stove. But right behind it is an exhaust fan and or an exhaust pipe. And that's just going straight up into the attic and not going anywhere. And that, I believe that's a flex pipe too. It looks like it's ribbed a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to bend that pipe up and over here as far as it'll go. And my plan is to go outside this wall right here with a, a vent so that no animals can get into it, but I'll have to get probably an extension pipe and run that over here and out that wall. That's the outside wall right there leading to the outdoors. So if any steam or grease blows out there, perfectly fine. Up here, it's gonna cause a lot of issues. Now there's three bags of loose insulation that I bagged up at the very beginning of this video. I'm going to be using right here at the lowest point of the attic where there's the least amount of insulation. I'll be able to fill this in and use up all the leftover insulation that I have. Now something that I found helps a lot is to have some sort of a insulation rake to pull and push the insulation around and I just used two pieces of scrap wood and screwed those together creating a rake. It's light and easy to move around in here and it works really really well. So you can see here all the insulation in the sections leveled out just about finished with all of this. I got to move all the tools and leftover wood out of the attic and clean this all up. Hey guys, so I just finished up the attic. Finally, it's been a couple weekends that I've been up here working on this, took a lot of time, but now I know all the wiring is sorted out. All the loose wires that were around here are now in junction boxes. Everything's done right. I've installed lights up here, so if I need to, I can flip a switch, turn on the lights in the attic. I don't think I'll use it for storage, but if I ever have to go up here again and work up here, these lights are amazing to work with. So. I've also sealed up all of the walls, electrical boxes, and all of these cam lights. There's probably 20 some lights, uh, cam lights in the ceiling, and they have big gaps around those. That all the air from the, in, in the winter, all the hot air from the house is rising right up through those cam lights, wasting all that heat. And then in the summer, the super hot heat up here is going down into the house through those cam lights, and we're losing a lot of efficiency. So I've sealed up all of that. We shouldn't have hardly any air leakage now. And I've already noticed with the heating is it's much more manageable now. It's doing a lot better. And I'm sure this summer our uh, AC bill is gonna drop a lot. So I'm really excited about that. 
So also I leveled out all of the loose insulation in here that you guys saw. There were spots where the previous owner did work up here and never covered it back up. It was just exposed sheetrock and that is really bad. You're gonna lose a lot of heat and a lot of AC in the summer. In next week's video, I'll show you guys we installed two knee walls to support the trusses at the other end of the house because the previous owner took out a supporting wall in the kitchen and in between the kitchen and living room opened it up. It looks really nice downstairs, but it messed everything up up here. So the trusses did not have these supports any anymore and they were starting to sag and we actually were able to pry up on those trusses individually and take that sag out and install a knee wall to support those and we shouldn't have any trouble now with those sagging anymore. Now I'll show you a couple quick before and after clips of what this looks like. Now something that I found that was really interesting about this is when I sealed up all those can lights and electrical boxes at the top of the walls it increased the efficiency of the heat but it also helped out with the quality of air and something that i used to notice was every time i woke up i had a little bit of congestion between allergies and asthma that bothered me a little bit but since i've sealed up the attic i no longer wake up with congestion or stuffy nose or any allergies so i think that is because i sealed up around those can lights and we have four can lights in our master bedroom so that would make a big difference and i think it's helped out a lot so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit that like button down below if you have not subscribed to the channel yet hit that subscribe button and if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below and i'll try to get back to you Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.